are they doing? You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Let's just look at what they're doing and maybe take from what that what they've been doing to implement here. Uh, but again, you know, the lower income communities, Trump wanted to defund after school programs. We need to make sure we have those after school programs, especially in our low, low income communities. We also have a lot of students who don't want to go to college and have no desire to go to college. So we need to make sure that we fund programs and training programs within our schools. Yes, we have our building trades that they can go to. Uh, for example, in the school district that I come from, they have a lot of great programs. They have, uh, you know, carpentry programs. They have a lot of, you know, labor type work. They have a, a culinary arts program. Those are the kinds of things that we need to do. We need to make sure that we have them in our schools so those kids who don't want to go to college have a fighting chance of having a good career. Thank you. Thank you. The federal laws that have already been proposed that are waiting in Congress to be voted on would put more money into allowing people to get educations, and they already do address trade schools, community schools, and um, Native American reservation schools, as well as public schools. But as, as was also set up here, it's not just about federal dollars for schools, and it's not just about something that happened with Betsy DeVos and, and Trump. This is decades of runaway corporatism that have encouraged everyone to turn everybody into a consumer instead of a citizen. And DeVos is just the pinnacle of that when she's turning schools into another investment opportunity instead of a place of education. But we need a real sea change in this country of valuing teachers, valuing education, valuing nurturing people, and not turning everything into consumers for the benefit of corporations. That's really what's at the root of our atrocious national attitude towards teachers. Thank you. Okay, so moving on, there's uh, a couple questions. I'll read this one. Um, what's your position on immigration? And speak to what would you do for those in the DACA program which have been tracked by President Trump and what can we do, as, what can you do as a member of, of Congress to finally get some immigration reform? Uh, this has been stalled for over a decade. This is 90. Yeah. Well, certainly I would want to keep the promise that we made to the Dreamers, and I would strongly support uh, the, uh, the DACA program. Uh, unfortunately, we can't do that until we flip co Congress, so we have to make that blue wave just pour all over them so that we can pass a fair immigration policy, so we can have a fair immigration policy with a road to citizenship for the people who are here, who have been living here, helping our economies, uh, building many of our downtowns, and uh, adding a great deal to our culture and not stealing anybody's jobs or uh, creating a criminal element. We have to support the immigrants who are here, give them a path to citizenship. And I, I do have to take a minute of personal privilege because I did state something and you gave someone time to answer, but I just want to say that Kate voted for Steve Levy's anti-immigrant pro racial profiling piece of legislation. And she was a member of the Right to Life Party, and if you're pro-choice, you don't become a member of the Right to Life Party. So I don't want what I say to sound as if I were casting mud on someone. I'm talking about someone's record that I have a problem with. Thank you. Okay. Okay. To so this was my response okay. you, to the time you, that you gave her. Okay. Okay. <laughs> David? Yeah. So, so, uh, what, 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 what? This, this anti-immigrant propaganda that Trump is pushing, that Zeldin supports, it's really terrible. And what's behind it is, is really, it's racism. It, it, and, and, I, my wife's family are immigrants from Uganda. My father-in-law grew up a poor Muslim boy in Uganda. He didn't have shoes until he was 10. He came here, he built a great career as a doctor. My wife is a doctor. 
it's so offensive what, what Trump and Zeldin are doing. We absolutely need to, to have a clean DACA bill, not, not, and, 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 and we need to stop talking about immigration as a, as a problem. We need, to, we need to recognize that immigrants make our country stronger, that countries that are open to different people, that, that, that's how we thrive. That's what makes countries dynamic. So that being said, we do need to look at our laws and, and, and the question of you know, comprehensive immigration reform. I mean, nothing, nothing in our system is easy, but we absolutely we need to stand up against this. A key element of their agenda is, is Trump and Zeldin is using ICE as this tool to go after immigrants. And I am against the behavior of ICE. The, their policy of, uh, there's a policy called ICE detainers. It's not legal, it's used to hold prisoners um, in jail for longer, it's unconstitutional, it's a second arrest. I'm against that in all circumstances. I know, uh, and, and I, I don't know, I, I, I would like, or all the candidates, it's a core issue, I would hope that all the candidates would be against ICE and all, uh, ICE detainers in all circumstances. They're unconstitutional, they're racist, and, and we should have clarification on where we stand on that. Okay, thank you, David. process and going through that. Um, I, I did it as an adult and uh, I have to tell you, uh, being an immigrant, I just told you what the experience was when I was an immigrant, when I grew up in Ireland and uh, when soldiers broke into your home and did what they did. Uh, so, DACA students, when I was a school bus driver, I had students on my bus who were not le living here legally in this country, who were concerned I, they were going to college. And Lee Zeldin went to school with them too. I bet you he doesn't know that they were students, both uh, students of uh, the school district that he was actually probably sitting next to. And they worked very hard. And I can tell you, my husband's been to El Salvador and Nicaragua. We do not need to be sending those young people back to a country they do not know. When they came here as babies, they should not be sent back to a country they do not know. This is their home, this is the only home they know. And I would like to take an opportunity of response. The, the, the specific bill that was being talked about, it was a workers' protection bill. This is about Suffolk County taxpayers' dollars. And when Suffolk County taxpayers are paying for vendors who do work for Suffolk County, we need to ensure that those workers and that those uh, companies are paying Social Security, paying into workers' comp. And not everybody who works off the books is an immigrant. There are many people who are legally in this country who work off the books and do not pay taxes. And that was the genesis of Matt's reason for that bill. And as far as pro-choice is concerned, again, I will say it again and again, I am pro-choice. I have always been pro-choice. Maybe it's not my choice, but this is America, and we have a separation of church and state, and everyone has a choice. You are entitled to your choice. I'm entitled to mine. Thank you. Regarding your question about immigration, Lee Zeldin, besides being awful, he's embarrassing. He came to Brookhaven Lab and he was congratulating us on a big construction milestone and there were 300 people in the room and he said, I believe in American exceptionalism to like hundreds of Russian and Japanese and German accelerator physicists. <laughs> Do you know who you're speaking to, Congressman? I don't think he gets it. I don't think he understands. I would, I would support a Clean Dream Act right away to keep that promise, and then we can go on to look at our actual immigration system. It needs bureaucratic repairs and a few specific adjustments, but it is a strong system and I don't want anyone to say that our immigration system is broken. It must continue to be based on keeping families together and bringing special skills into the country and dealing with refugee crises and ensuring diversity by capping immigrants from different countries. I would do away with a three-year and ten-year ban. I would make sure that there are more flexible migrant work visas that are skills-based instead of employer-based, and I would ask our farmers and our other employers on Long Island what they need. Thank you. Thank you. 
so on this question, I, I, I'm in agreement with what's been said here. I, I, I'm very, very strongly pro DACA. I, I, I consider myself the child of immigrants. Technically, I'm the grandchild of immigrants. And, and this is a country built on immigrants, and we need to protect them. And we need to protect the right of future immigrants to come to America, because that's how we, that's what our society is all about. Um, but if you look at DACA, DACA is an issue Trump created. Obama had a plan, and Trump took DACA <coughs> away. And now he's trying to blame Democrats for it and use it to divide America. It's wrong, and this is where we have to fight back, and I'll say it again, we need to win this election nationally so we can put a stop to Trump's policies. In terms of immigration, though, it's more than just DACA, and it's more than just DACA, especially in this area. It's TPS, too. And we have people from Haiti who are about to be sent back to Haiti because their TPS is expiring, and Trump is doing nothing about it. It's not fair, it's not right, and we need to take a stand. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Okay. Um, I got a question here, and, and um, I, I know we're getting down to the end, so I want to, I'm gonna actually only allow, we're gonna go for a one minute answer on this. Um, you're gonna have to put your future hats on right now, and you're in a debate with Lee Zeldin sometime in October. Um, and the moderator of the debate asks you a question, which you might think is a ridiculous question, but you have to answer the question. And the question is, what if anything do you agree with President Trump about? <laughs> Well, I, we don't have to answer the question, right? We can say, I disagree with the question. I disagree with the premise of the question. I, I, I think it's my turn, right? I, <laughs> yes, so, yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, but listen, I, I, I want to go back to, I, I've used a little of my time on the issue of immigration. So, you know, we, we've been asked at these forums to take a pledge about unity, right? Who, that we're going to get behind the nominee. Why don't we, why are we never asked to take a pledge around the issue of ICE detainers, which is the ICE is behaving unconstitutionally and racist. On, if we're going to take pledges, let's take pledges on what are the core values of the Democratic Party. So, and, and I asked the question, my fellow candidates didn't, didn't answer it, but I guess I was breaking the rules, so I, I, I apologize, Jim. That's, that's all right. Uh, uh, Trump, um, what, what, what do I agree with him? Right? Hillary was asked that question, right? And she, like, it was hard, right? Oh, she said his kids were nice, but that was the question. What do I agree with him on? I mean, so I, you know, Trump said he, we should pull out of Syria. He tweeted it. You know, it's hard to know because he changes from, from minute to minute, day to day. So I agreed with that. There's no, there's no military solution there. But then he changed his mind and, and, and did missile attacks. Okay. So I agreed with something he said, but then he changed his mind. Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> I agree with what he said for one minute. Right, for one minute. Okay. Kate? I'm sitting here thinking, what can I say that I agree with him on right now? I don't know, it may change between now and November. Uh, however, uh, let's, let's talk about Lee Zeldin. Uh, anytime Trump makes anything sexist or racist, any kind of remarks like Charlottesville, what does he do? He defends them. And that's just a shame. So we need to make sure that we have a member of Congress that, you know, I, we have to be able to work across party lines. Absolutely we do. And, you know, if he does something right, do we have to work with him? Absolutely we do. However, at this point in time, we have a congressman right now who no matter what he does, no matter how wrong it is, he will always find a way to defend him. And he did it again, actually calling now for a special uh, counsel uh, to try and discredit uh, Mueller in his investigation. So let's make sure we all have a, a member of Congress who will be able to stand up and who is willing to fight and stand up against uh, Donald Trump. I'm always wearing my future hat. <laughs> and unfortunately, our future will have Trump in it for at least a few more years. No. Maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> right? I'll hold you to that. He has to not be in the news as well as not be in office or else I'm right in your mistake. I think I would say to that moderator, the value of a Congress member is not in agreeing with the president when he's right, but in holding their ground when the president is wrong, and you can count on me to do that. Okay. 
when I'm up on stage with Lee Zeldin in October, it's going to be important to have an answer. And actually, we have one. Trump, when he ran, called for an infrastructure program in America. When Trump got elected, Chuck Schumer tried to work with Trump on the infrastructure program that he ran on. And then it went away. Trump talks infrastructure, he talks a big game, and Trump will still tell you he's for infrastructure, as, with, as will Lee Zeldin. So I'll agree, I'm for infrastructure. But I really am for infrastructure. <laughs> that's a priority in America. And that's the way we should twist that kind of question and use it to our advantage. Thank you, Patrick. I would say, I want to make America great again. I want to make the America that I believed in before we had Trump in the White House. An America that believed in our Constitution. An America that believed in the norms uh, that we had always trusted to, to, have the, the, to serve the culture that makes us the great country that we are. An America that welcomes the stranger, that welcomes the immigrant, that believes in education, that believes in fair play, that believes in telling the truth now and then. <laughs> and an America that believes that we have a, a, a system of checks and balances, and, that, and you shouldn't expect the Congress to just be your rubber stamp. An America that believes that you don't threaten people with firing them when they disagree with you. That we believe in truth to power. That's the America I believe in and I want to make America great again. Thank you, Julian. Okay, I, uh, I have a couple more questions up here, but uh, we said we were going to try to take some questions from the floor. And I'm going to risk taking this microphone out front of that monitor. I hope it doesn't. The sound guy, I can't see back there. Is that going to be a problem? I don't, hope I don't s squelch you out. But does anybody, if you have a question, would, I'd ask you to actually come up front so we can hear you. Uh, just could you come over here? And we'll... I can just go back up too much. Okay. Thank you. I need some help. The uh, anti-choice people are driving me crazy with a new, uh, apparently a model they have now. Uh, which I think addresses the uh, the idea that the uh, embryo and fetus is not a person, and the model is very it's a very shocking model. Uh, let me get it right. Mass murderers must dehumanize. Oh my God! I don't know what to say. That I want to know what should I reply to that? Okay. You're, 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 okay. So what? So, so what is what? How would you reply to that? I'm, I don't think I understand. Yeah. He just, I mean, that's a horrible, it's a horrible thing to say. Mass murderers must dehumanize. So you're saying that's a new, uh... That's a new slogan that they're using. So, I mean, okay. this, why don't we just go rapid fire through that? I mean, you can just kind of talk about it. If you have a comment, I might... You know what? I, I, um, those people tend to demonize a great, um a great institution, Planned Parenthood. I, was, I served on the board of Planned Parenthood. And Planned Parenthood probably, uh, probably avoids more abortions than any other institution. And so the people who really are clear thinking don't understand that we have to work together, uh, work with um, evidence-based, uh, Edu uh, sex education and family planning uh, so that nobody has to have an abortion, but if they choose to, it's their choice. Thank you, Vivian. Anybody else want to comment? Okay. Elaine? Okay. Planned Parenthood sent us all an email yesterday about the results of a, a new poll. Abortion is even more polarized as an issue than ever, and the people who oppose it are increasingly of older generations, and the people who do not oppose a woman's right to choose are increasingly of even younger generations. So it's not really a war of slogans. It's a war of making young women understand that to draw the line against all abortion is to draw the line against birth control. It's to roll back women's wages, women's ability to stay at work and have promotions. It's rolling back every economic opportunity for women and that birth control is worth getting out and voting for. Don't be cynical, don't be dismissive, but fight for this. Thank you, Elaine. Um, 
lines over here. Oh, one thing I wanted to say, I should have, uh, before we uh, went to this, uh, please make sure your question is directed at all the candidates. Um, also, try to keep it succinct. Um, when I, people told some people that I know that I was doing this, they said, you're doing this really? Because uh, I can talk and I'm trying to keep my words short and clipped. So, yes. <laughs> um, so please, when you ask your question, try to frame it in a way that it's a, a direct question that all the candidates can answer and it's, it's a question and not a, not a speech. Thank you. Okay. You've, uh... You've all mentioned that uh, Zeldin is not working for CD1 and you want to flip it blue. Now some of you have been have entered the race several months ago. Uh, I believe Vivian was the first one in 10 months ago. Uh, the FEC released its campaign finance numbers this week and some of these numbers were very abysmal. How do you realistically expect to win against Selton with his huge war chest? And most importantly, at what point are you going to put your egos aside to back out of the race and work to flip it blue? Thank you. So I guess I know I've lost where we Who was the last one to run around? Well, we're going to continue Can to you? try to raise money. Uh, uh, and I, having seen the candidates here, uh, we're fighting because we believe that the values that we believe in are not non-existent in Lee Zeldin and not because of ego. And I can speak for myself. Okay, thank you, Vivian. Anybody else have a comment on that? We just kind of... Well, I can say it really is a shame, and that's why public campaign finance is so important.